Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Paige, this is Seeking Alexandria, and I'm excited because today we're doing a full face of first impressions. Yeah, I know, we're not gonna be using every product in this box. This is just what it means when I get out my first impressions box because I... <sighs> You guys, I love these videos so much, and I'm actually really excited because I'm doing something different with today's. So basically, this is the bin that I have for all of my high-end, brand new stuff that I want to try on camera for the first time. I have two bins that are dedicated to drugstore, so definitely be sure down in the comments to let me know if you like these kinds of videos, because I could probably do, just with the stuff I have, like six videos that are just full face of us hanging out and using new products, because I'm obsessed, and I love them so much, and honestly, I'm the type of person like I want to use them on camera I don't even like want that moment for myself I'm like no I have to have that moment with her buddy so let me know if you guys love these videos down below but today we are gonna be diving into this guy right here oh my god am I excited okay let's set it down oh god now here's the thing with today's video and the reason it's gonna be just a little bit different so I am actually going to do a full face but it's not really gonna have much to do with eyes my eyes are really really puffy and swollen today and I have a feeling it has something to do with like allergies and like a little bit of a cold moment and so my eyes are going to be super puffy. They're really irritated and I just don't want to dry them out more with like eyeshadow and all that kind of stuff. So we're mainly going to be working with face and I have a couple of different foundations I can choose from. I have the Anastasia Beverly Hills um, stick foundation. I have the Mega Forever HD stick foundation or I have this one which I'm using today which is the Mega Forever Matte Velvet Skin Foundation. And I'm actually really excited about this. So I ordered this right after it launched and then literally it dropped off the face of the planet. Like I put it in this bin and this is why sometimes this bin can be a bad thing because I put it in there and then it had a palette that went on top of it and I literally couldn't find it. I don't know and it never dawned on me to like look in the bin. It was just it was a whole moment but I found it. It is here now and this is what we're going to be trying. So if you are new here anytime I test out a new foundation or something like this that I haven't tried it's either a new foundation or a new primer. So if we're doing a new foundation we are going to do a split primer of something that I know I really like. So on the one side I'm going to grab the Tatcha Silk Canvas. I love this. Um, it's pretty good. It's not like my favorite, but I really love this for closer to the end of the day. Whereas most people say that they love this for, you know, it, oh, it, it helps smooth everything out and it does this amazing thing and blah, blah, blah. For me, that's not really the case. I don't notice that it does much, and I really, you have to like work and really press this one into the skin, but I don't notice that it does a lot in the way of um, smoothing it right now, but throughout the day, I feel like it, it helps my foundation lay smoother. Um, normally, when it would like settle into the pores and fine lines, this is kind of like, no bitch, you ain't settling nowhere. So I've really grown to kind of enjoy this primer, as you can tell. I've used a lot of it, and it's kind of great. So we are going to do this on this side. Oh, yeah. Get in there, baby. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then on the other side, I want to take my Glow Essence from Becca. I have used this l so many times. Like, you guys, the bottle is so far gone. I really love this stuff. It smells like cucumber melon. And I did a full first impression of this. I've put it in several videos. Um, but it's just, it's so good. So if you've seen this a lot on my channel, I apologize. But this works so well with my MAC Studio Fix powder. This stuff, this stuff right here in the compact. It works so nicely with that. It, like, it's such a great base for anything powder because it has like some beautiful luminosity to it but it's also slightly tacky so the powder just like sticks to it so well. I love that I just talked to you for like a hundred hours about a powder foundation and it's not even the one I'm using today so that's good. Not only that I'm not even using a powder foundation. Wow Paige wow you need to take a take a moment. Oh my god does that feel so good. Like and these two they feel so different like the Tatcha makes everything so slick and like smooth but also kind of mattified whereas the glowy one gives like a glow but it's also slightly tacky. Like it's just so completely different. I love it. Oh my god and I love both isn't that weird. Actually a lot of times I will wear them both together like I'll do Tatcha and then I'll put that glowy all over and it's just perfect. Oh my god I love it. Okay. Shut up, Paige. Let's talk. Let's 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 figure out our lives. So for this foundation, I am on the MakeupForever.com website, and it says here this has 4.6 out of 5 stars with 147 reviews. Not bad. On the back of it, it says next generation mattifying foundation that combines full coverage, 24-hour wear, and second skin effect. Heck, hey. The buildable texture won't clog pores and is easy to build up and blend, leaving your complexion looking velvety without a mask effect. The waterproof formula makes for a long-lasting, flawless finish and is enriched with cinnamon and ginger for, wait, to be respectful of your skin. 
to be respectful. What's it doing? Taking me out to drinks? Okay, let's go ahead and get this happening. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I love foundation. You guys know how I feel about foundation. All right, got you guys all good and moved in. This is what she looks like. Just a nice little plastic component here. And it does say that this is a full coverage foundation. So I'm I'm excited. Now, let's start off by seeing how she looks. Probably should like roll up. By the way, do you love that I still have wet hair and I'm wearing a hoodie? Like I'm going for comfort today. Comfort is key and I'm just, I'm feeling it. Okay, so Y215, not bad. It's a little yellow, but I think I can work with it. We're gonna start off with the damp Morphe sponge and work her in. Okay, after we get the hair off my face, stop it. Wow, that looks really pretty. Like one go over and the coverage is actually really nice. I'll have to build it up a little bit in this area, but the coverage is, or the color and the way that it's setting is beautiful. It's sitting really smooth on my skin. Wow. So that's one layer over that half of my face. I am going to see how well it builds on top of this area right here. For the most part, though, I'm not having any issues with, like, it being patchy or clinging weird. It just, it looks really pretty. I do want to try this. See, that didn't build, like, at all, though. And I went in. Like, I'm going in and adding it and adding it, and it's not... It's not doing much. I might have to build with a brush. So let's go ahead and grab a little brush and find out. <sighs> I'm so pissed. I can't find where I put my freaking. I, I bought that the Jaclyn Hill brush set and I wanted to try it and I can't find it. So we're just going to have to go in with a regular flat top brush. This is the Morphe Y6. <sighs> it's fine. It's all right, Paige. You're going to live. So let's go ahead and try this with the Morphe Y6 on this side of the face. And let's just see what we think. Ooh, that actually looks really pretty with a brush. It's giving me, like, a little bit of streakage, like, enough streak that I would have to definitely pat it out with a beauty blender. But, like, it's pretty. It's, it's pretty. Did you like how I said that? That's really nice. Like, I don't hate it. The coverage is definitely a little bit nicer, I think, with a brush. I think it goes a little farther builds up a little faster, but at the same time, it is getting a little clingy. So if you do have to use a brush to build up coverage, I do suggest that you be a little bit mindful. So it did dry down before I could really build up any coverage, which it's not bad that it dries down. I wish that I would have like known it was going to dry that fast. I guess I should have assumed because it's matte velvet. But my only concern is trying to get because how is concealer going to blend? Like, I mean, obviously we're going to find out. But that's all right. Neither here nor there. As it dries down, it doesn't look nearly as nice on my skin. Like, for some reason, it's starting to look powdery. So, for concealer, I want to try the MAC Studio Fix NC10. This is 24-hour smooth wear concealer. I picked this up in the shade... Oh, NC10. I already said that. <laughs> and we're going to grab this, and I want to try putting that under the eye. And I am going to try... Wow, well, you don't get very much on that little tiny doe foot there, do you, Chief? Um, but I want to try blending that out before I do both sides, because if she's going to be a nightmare, I need to know. You know what I'm saying? Now, I haven't heard anything about either of these products. It's like they both fell off the face of the earth. Um, I feel like normally when there's a big release, especially from Makeup Forever, like, don't people normally talk about it? Even MAC. I've seen some people use another product from MAC that I'm going to be using in this video. I picked up their sculpting contour kit thing. And I've seen a couple people talk about that, but for the most part, like, nobody has been talking about any of these, which I thought was so weird. Um, okay, so that didn't give me hardly any coverage. It brightened up a little, but literally no coverage. I like the color, though. This is a really nice color. So I'm just going to try and build it up a little and see. It's not lifting the foundation or anything, which is really nice. And it's setting really well under my under eye. It doesn't look super dry. It actually looks really hydrating. Like, my under eye doesn't look, like, crepey or baggy. This is going okay. All right. And it's mixing really well. Like, again, biggest concern was that foundation, but it looks really nice and bright under the eye, which is kind of great. Okay. I have to be honest. I really think I like that concealer. It looks really nice. It's not super full coverage. Like, this is, like, I would say about buildable to medium coverage. I'm going to throw a little bit on my eyelids, too, because I for forgot about those little beacons of, of skinly goodness up there. So let's just go ahead and cover those up. And then, girl, we gonna powder like it's 1969. Now that I say that, I don't even know that they powdered in 1969. Oh, girl. Looking a little bit crepey with that foundation. It's making some stuff look emphasized over here that I do not particularly love. Can't wait to set it. Now, for powder, 
we are going to use this bad boy right here. This is my Maybelline Fit Me in 05 Fair. I was going to test out some new powders, but I'm not going to because, like, I really want to give these a fair shot, and this is my go-to favorite powder. So I take this, and I put it everywhere that I put concealer, and just a very thin layer that I like to press in with my damp beauty sponge. Um, I like to do it like this because you always want to work in thin layers especially if you cake up or you get dry or you can like have a lot of texture, which is what I have. I like to work in very thin layers that you can really press into the skin. It just really helps everything come together and be like one sheet of like mask versus having multiple layers because the more layers you can see, that's what gives it like that cakey, chalky, and all those like really undesirable textures on your face that you don't want. So again, just kind of working to press everything in and you always pat out those creases on your under eye, girl, if you have them, which 90 99% of us do and then like the three people that don't are on TV making us look bad, but that's fine Okay, now while this sits here and kind of bakes into the skin just a little bit I want to make sure I keep this area good and bright and I'm not so much wanting to bake the foundation I'm wanting to bake that concealer and help brighten this area because this foundation is a little bit dark for me now girl Let me tell you when it comes to face products I have sat here and I have battled it out because I have got the Mac one I have for blush I have it cosmetics blushes. I also have this tartlet little book that they came out with I picked up the Kevin Aquan palette for shade and light contouring which I have to to play with at some point and still like I have picked up so many of these face products because I'm really wanting to dive into the face and you guys have noticed this a lot about me lately I have just been so about the face and like trying to find the right products and the way that I like my face to look and it hasn't even been about the eyes it's been like face like I'm serving face so that's what we're gonna keep doing today I haven't decided which blush I'm really you know what I have I think I want to play with the it cosmetics ones and then you guys can tell me if you're excited for the tart book which I think we'll do in another video so let's go ahead and dive in to this MAC Studio Fix powder here. I obviously picked this up in the shade light to medium. Love this big freaking palette mirror that you get here. This is great. Oh my god, and it's such a good mirror. And it stands straight up. Like, if you're doing your makeup, this is so easy to hold and, like, do your... Oh my god, this is nice. Okay, wow, and I feel like I can freaking see my damn self. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to start by brushing off this bake and I want to do that with just a tiny tiny freckle of my MAC Studio Fix powder this is in uh, NW10 as well I love this powder as you can tell it's almost gone and I want to brush my bake away with this mainly because I do need a little bit more coverage so what I'll do is I'll do a little bit of this and it also is going to lightly set my cheek area without causing like any huge ruffles or issues there. Like it's not going to cause any um, buildup of product because it's such a light, light veil of powder. But it's also going to give me just a little bit of extra coverage. There we go. Like I dunked in once to this like one good time and then went all over my face or half my face. Dunked in one more time and did the other half. So barely any powder foundation. I do find that if you have texture or anything like that, it is very advantageous if you're going to like brush off powder to have a little powder on your brush already. Otherwise, your brush is dry and it'll cling to it and it'll kind of like pull off your face. Whereas if it has another like very finely milled powder on it already, it'll help glide over the other powder. So if you have to wipe powder off and you do have an issue with texture or lifting or grabbing anything like that, be sure to just put a lot. It doesn't have to be um, like a foundation powder. It can be a little MAC Studio or whatever this is, the Maybelline Fit Me. It can be any kind of powder that you would normally use on your face. And just really lightly, lightly rub it on top and it'll help lift all of that back off. And just the tiny, tiny bit of that Studio Fix right in this area did help give me a little more coverage, which is awesome. So now let's move on to this sculptor right here, which I'm so excited about. Look at these colors. Like this is so relatively pasty people friendly. Oh my god, I'm so excited. So I'm looking at these bronzers, you guys, and I think I want to get started with this guy right over here. It looks like it is probably the lightest in all the bronzers in this row, but I just want to call attention to, I think it looks actually really good on camera like this. They actually have three different undertones represented in this palette, which is really cool. They have like more of a white neutral one, a yellow, and then a pink undertone, and then it looks like the bronzers kind of correlate. You can see that this is a little more pink undertone, a little more yellow, and then a little more neutral, which is just really nice. Like, I've never seen a palette arranged quite like that and like just have it be so like nicely undertone that it kind of pops off with like 
at my actual eye. Um, they're a little bit too, with that being said, the undertones are a little too rich for me. Like the yellow is a little too yellow. The pink is too pink. Like I would never really be able to use those. Um, these two right here in color, they kind of remind me of my Park Ave Princess palette, but these have more yellow and pink in them than those do, which is why that one would work for me and I don't know that these would necessarily work but I will try to maybe mix them with the white maybe that would look good um, but I'm going to start doing this on the Velvet Luxe plush brush this is the 316 from It Cosmetics I want to try doing a little bit of bronzer with this so we're going to lightly tap in to that shade here we're just going to see how she works girl how do you work do you like to flip it down and reverse it what that was not even close to a song page Okay, so as like a light, light color on my cheeks, like I haven't built them up or anything, these look nice. I do have a little bit of an issue with them getting patchy right here, but because there's like a new foundation and all of that underneath, I don't want to say that it's the product because it could be the foundation um, because the foundation was starting to get a little bit thick. So we'll, we'll just kind of check it out. And I really like how it doesn't have to look super harsh on my cheek. It looks like a really natural line right there. I mean, as natural as a line of bronzer can look on your skin, but it looks really good. Now, we're going to set this down here for just a second, and I do want to grab my blush. So, I picked these up a long time ago from uh, Ulta. These, were, these weren't, I think these were on sale. They were like half off. It was like an Ulta beauty steal or something, but they had everything in this line, like, or this packaging or whatever. These are the Confidence in Your Glow, uh, what, healthy... Healthy Flush Blushing Bronzer. I don't know. I'm mainly in these for the blushes because I really want to look at them. And then they sold it with this brush, which I picked up the brush. Normally, I wouldn't do this, but this had really good reviews, and it's like this weird stick blush brush thing. So I figured we would give it a try, but all right, let's go ahead and open this guy up here. What shade is this one? This is Instant Nude Glow. God, that is gorgeous. Okay. Like, I don't think I could hardly ever use that for a bronzer, but if you were to mix it all together and make a blush, hello, yes. Which, that's why I picked these up. I didn't pick these up to be like, oh, look at my bronzer. It was like, oh, hell no. Look at my blush that I'm going to make look so damn pretty. Okay, get that plastic thing out of my life. Hello. So, this one was Instant Nude Glow, and this is Instant Natural Glow. God, these are beautiful. Now, I'm going for such like a neutral kind of look, but I really think I need a little tiny pop right here. So I think I'm going to go with this one, and I want to focus it, I think, in between these two shades where they meet and mix in like a little bit of this area with that. So let's go ahead and grab this It Cosmetics Heavenly Skin One Sweep Wonder Brush. <laughs> that is quite the name. It says... Pairs perfectly with your favorite It Cosmetics skincare and color-infused skincare products like their highlights, blushes, and bronzers. Um, innovative brush hair technology. Oh, is that what that is? Okay. It's kind of pretty, right? Come on. That kind of gives me feelings. This is really pretty. Oh, I could... That feels luxurious. All right. This is a big old ColourPop brush. It's just a fluffy one, and I need to, like, diffuse that a little. That's the only thing I don't like about that brush is that I can't, like go in and kind of, you know, work it through. I can't diffuse it. It's more of like a whoop and what you get is what you get situation. I want to try it again because apparently I haven't gotten enough punishment and I really want to tap it off. And then I'm going to take it over here and I want to see, is that better? That's a little better. Okay. So I think the trick is keeping as much of it as possible on the tippy tip of this brush and then kind of feathering it on like that and then working it back. Okay. Wait, I'm getting it. You guys, I feel like I'm doing a science experiment right now. Well, it's pretty much what I'm doing, except with makeup. That is actually, and it feels really nice. I could see this working, too, for, like, highlight, if you were wanting to do, like, one of those moments, you know? I could totally see that working. And this side worked a lot better keeping it on the tip. Okay. So now we're going to test out this powder. So let's look at this guy right here again. I want to take this on my Damp Beauty Blender. And I want to take it on like the tip side and try it under the eyes and see if it works as like a brightening powder. That is so, like that's bright. Okay, a little too bright. I'm going to mix it with, whoops, hello. It's a little bit bright. I'm going to mix it with the yellow right next door and see if I can create like a nice fade. 
down in this area where because like I love that my under eye is so bright but I need the transition into the blush to be a little bit more subtle so I'm just mixing those two colors and kind of popping it right here now also just because I don't like to leave my eyes quite so sad looking I'm gonna grab a little bit of this shade right here and I'm gonna throw it into the crease of my eye just for a little bit of definition but not too much we're just going to plop it in there. It's not going to look anything amazing. That's definitely not what we're here for. I've just found that, like, if I don't give my eye some definition, it doesn't look right. Like, my eye just looks funny because I have such hooded eyes. It's like, oh, her tiny little eyeball sticking out of that big old socket. <laughs> like, it's just, it helps to give it a little bit of lift, a little something, something. You know what I'm saying? So this next one I'm kind of excited with. It's like... <laughs> I've never seen this before. This is the Ofra Makeup Fixer. It says it's a light, refreshing mist that keeps makeup in place all day. I've never seen it. I got it from their website. I'm excited. Let's see. Oh, that's kind of wet. Ooh, it smells like a man's perfume. Legit. And it's kind of intense. Interesting. God, why is it so scented? <laughs> I don't understand. Okay. So that's not going to really work for what I'm going for because it's a little bit too matte and I need a setting spray that has a little bit of luminosity to it. I can tell that you, and you guys can probably see it on camera, this foundation is so, so matte that I need to add like a little something to it. So I'm going to give, what do I want to use here? This would actually work really, really well. This is the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. I love the Morphe Setting Spray. I feel like it is honestly, like it's no Urban Decay All Nighter by any means, but this is like, to me, it's just totally different. I just, oh my God, I love it. Where the hell is the highlight that I bought? And I have some Ofra ones. Now I went on their website. They had a huge sale. Um, what was it? maybe a month or two ago they had a big sale and then they also were like letting coupon codes be used and Ofra has uh what is it trend mood I believe you can use their code and get 30% off which I think is what I did I think um and I picked up some highlights oh these are the new ones from Nikki yes I grabbed uh cloud nine and space baby which were her like pinkish and then her bluish highlight I grabbed both of those and then I grabbed star island and then I grabbed this is um what is this Bellini right yeah this is Bellini which is a blush so we don't need that we can put that back um so which one i'm not really feeling like a blue highlight or a pink highlight um but let's look at this right here what is this star island oh my god in heaven that is so beautiful and i've never oh i've never played with this before <gasps> oh it's pretty okay this is what we're using <laughs> I'm so excited now let me grab my little brush hello you guys, I'm having like a minute. I swear, everything that I needed for this video was like directly in front of me. And then as I started to film, it just like went to hell. Like where did where did everything go? I don't even know my life. And I love this new revamped packaging that they did. Like it's really cute. I like that they have a mirror in here. The packaging itself is nice and sturdy. I like this. And you are able to refill their, um, any like any of their packages or anything like that. They're refillable, which I think is really cool because it cuts down on wasted packaging. So let's go ahead. Um, I have setting spray all over my mirror. So let's just rub that on my leg and let's go ahead and apply this. Which side is the highlight on? There we go. Oh my God. Ooh. Oh girl. No, I'm sorry. Who are you? Are you coming for me girl? Cause I don't think that's a good idea with my highlight. I don't think you should ever do that. Uh, their highlight is honestly like the best highlight ever. I don't know what they put in this formula to make it so workable when you have textured skin, but it never, oh my God, this has like, okay, calm down Paige. You need to shut up because I'm very busy. Do not talk to me. This reminds me of like my favorite, which you guys all know, glazed donut. And it's very glazed donut-y, but with like a yellow undertone. Like that one is straight up white. And this one is like, hello, hi. And I'm doing, this is like, the biggest nose highlight faux pas right there. You don't, you're not supposed to highlight your whole nose. I do if I feel like it because this is what I do. So, wow. Oh my God, you guys. I'm sorry, out of space, space station. It just shut down because of my highlight. They were like, I'm sorry, Paige. We can't see, toot toot, beep, beep. We can't see past you, girl. And I was like, I know. <laughs> I have that effect on space stations. You guys, my skin is like glowy as all hell and I'm obsessed with it. 
Okay, so we love the highlight. This is a big win. Um, yes, and I will be putting the Ofra ones from Nika Tutorials, Nika Tutorials, the Space Baby and Cloud Nine, the pinky and blue ones. I will be putting those back in here because I think we should do one where I kind of play with those for sure. They definitely don't like mesh with like my very minimalistic look I have going on today, but still kind of gorgeous. Like that high, my God, that highlight, life changing. So I always like to. Once I have all of my highlight done and on, before I do mascara and lips, I always go in with one final shot of my setting spray. Mm. I really like to just get in there and then fan your fanny. Oh yeah, girl, fan your fanny, fan your fanny. Oh my God, you guys, I'm an idiot. At the beginning of this foundation, I was like, oh, and I have these other foundations. I also have the Hourglass Liquid Powder Foundation, mattifying foundation right here. And I have the Origins Stay Tuned Balancing Face Makeup. So um, I'm just saying, I got more. Yes, hello, I want you to reach all your potential and reach right on up to our Heavenly Father and thank him for being alive. Thank you and good night. Ooh, girl, yes. Now, for mascara, I am going to use the Wander Beauty Volume and Curl Mascara. I believe this came in a BoxyCharm, and I haven't used it yet, so I was like, we're putting that in a video. See, sometimes when I get, like, my BoxyCharm and stuff like that, I actually will hold out on, like, certain products if they're, like, you know, not newer launches, but if they're, like, a bigger, more recognizable brand. I have a hair on my nose, and I will, um, I'll save them for videos like this. Why do I have a hair on my nose? Excuse me, sir, could you not... Ooh, up close, girl. My nose looks kind of cakey. Okay, wow. A little, a, little, a little thick in the nosal nostril region, which is actually ironic because, like, in this area, I hardly ever put any foundation on, like, the tip of my nose, and it's, like, kind of cakey. Okay. Anyways, mascara. Ooh, mascara. Let's do it. I got damn mascara on my face. I gotta be honest, you guys. I actually kind of like this mascara. It doesn't do much for, like, the lengthening but it is really like volumizing it makes them look very thick like as weird as it's gonna sound in the actual shaft of the lash it makes them look that sounds so dirty but it makes them look really like thick and voluminous which is cool they're not they're not not making them look long um they just really, and they're so black, like that is really nice. So for lips, I actually picked these up and I was going to do a full video on them. These are the uh, Tarte Kiss and Kindness. They did like a little campaign. I got a hat from it. If you bought it all together, you got a hat. And basically it was five of their lipsticks put together and these were in bundles to help like end bullying and that kind of thing. And I thought it was such a cool, um, like just such a cool concept that I had to you know, support it. And I thought the lipstick shades were really pretty. So maybe we should do one of these. I also have which I know you guys, a lot of you would like them, but a lot of you don't care. Um, these are the Kim K. I grabbed the peach lip liners and the peach lipsticks. So maybe in another video, we will play with those as well because I'm really excited. You guys know... That doesn't sound good. <laughs> you guys know how much I love Kim K lips. Like, oh my God, they're so good. I don't care what you think about her. I don't care that the packaging is like kind of shitty. I just really think that like her, the lipstick formula, I, I have, I keep one in my purse. Like I love them that much. They're so good. Oh my God. How cute are these? Oh my God. Okay. So what bundle is this? This is Don't Be Mean Behind the Screen. And what's the other one bundle name here? Oh, this is Kisses and Kindness. Okay. So let's, this is dark ass purple. That's not going to work. Okay. Okay. I'm mainly looking for a nude though, which is what we are focused on. So do I want the shade? Fine. Let's try this shade. It looks really pretty. Okay. Wipe the lips off. These are like a matte kind of matte i don't know where i was going kind of what these are a matte lipstick let's go ahead and see how they run see how they run now obviously this isn't going to be like a super long wearing lipstick or anything but that color is so pretty and again this is the shade fine i like it girl she is fine uh -huh. hello so overall you guys so far i'm really liking like everything that i tried today i mean for the most part i think everything looks really good I'm kind of impressed. Now, I am going to go ahead and wear this. I was debating on whether or not I want to do a wear test, but I think I will. I can already tell you, though, I'm not loving the way that this foundation looks up close. It looks very, like, emphasized. Like, texture is very emphasized, um, like, through here and whatnot. But, I'm again, I'm hoping that in the next couple of hours, things will kind of mellow out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run off of camera. I'm going to obviously go do my day, and I will stop in at the end of the day, and I want to see how everything wears. I'm going to do, obviously, like, look at my hair. I'm doing a very laid-back, kind of chill moment today. I didn't want anything that was, like, crazy out there, and I feel like this is a very good like moment for that so 
Anyways, let's go ahead. Let's go do the day. I'm going to take these lipstick swatches off. I almost just ran them through my hair. I, <laughs> fun fact, one time I had a uh, lipstick on my fingers and I like didn't know it. I had fake nails on and I had gotten like a tiny bit of liquid lipstick under my fingernail and I went like this and I ended up putting a hot pink Jeffree Star liquid lipstick through my hair. <laughs> I was like, well, that's nice. <laughs> that was a good touch. So I, I try to avoid that now in the future and not put lipstick in my hair because that was a bitch to get out. Anyways, okay. Enough stories page. I'm going to go do my day and I will be right back. Okay, you guys, I am back. It is the end of the day. It has been 10 hours since this morning since I applied this foundation and I wanted to stop on here real quick and of course just make this video a little bit longer because why not? So starting off, I'm actually going to just dive right in. I want to talk about this foundation, the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin. Yeah, Matte Velvet Skin. I had an interesting go with this foundation, so here's what I'm going to start off by saying. I actually don't hate this, number one. Number two, it did, that was like a very <laughs> dramatic number one. Number two, it did actually get a lot better throughout the day, which is kind of what I've I've expressed that before. I've said, you know, sometimes just foundations, they just don't look good at first. This was definitely one of those that after like an hour to two hours, it really warmed up on my skin, and I noticed it settling back down and giving me a very nice smooth effect up in this area, and it looked so beautiful. The only areas that I had any issue with this foundation throughout the day were more in this area, Area, which also smoothed down a lot throughout the day. So if I had to say, like just going through and writing it, full coverage, I would say it was buildable to a decent full coverage, but again, I could not build it in this area. It dried down a little quickly. So first critique, definitely work with this in sections and make sure before you move on to another area that you are satisfied with what you have in that area that you've either spot concealed before or that you've done something else because I, you're just not gonna be able to like do your whole face and then go back over it later. So that's number one. Number two, I personally, if I were to use this again, like how would I make it better? I would want to go in with as little of this product as possible, not because it's bad, but honestly, it shined when it was by itself. When I had just primed and I started going in with that beauty blender and I was just pouncing it over this portion of my face, it looked so beautiful. It wasn't grabbing. It wasn't patchy. It wasn't clinging to anything. It was like just nestling and just like caressing my pores ever so beautiful. And then when I started to go in and I added everything and I tried to build it up, I was like less and less happy with it. So for me, if I were to do it again, I would definitely prime first. And I think that the primers, I'll get to that here in a second, but I think that your primer with this one will make a difference. Um, but I would prime. I might spot conceal if you have really, really dark or agitated acne like I I do in this area all of my other light acne covered without a problem so only if you have like really dark like dark dark or discolored areas on your face then I would definitely kind of treat those before going in with this the only thing I would change and again if you do not have to set your face do not set your face if you find that there's an area you can get away without setting do not set it I think that that would be key if you do have to set it I would go as thin and as finely milled as possible now this did actually accept my MAC Studio Fix powder very nicely, but if I were to do it again and I had the coverage how I liked it, I would take either a very, very thin, thin, thin layer of this all over the face, or if you have it in your collection, or you have the money to buy it or you wanted to test it out, this is the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. This is a great finely milled powder. It is my favorite finely milled powder aside from this guy right here. Like I consider this to be just a hair less fine than this one, if that makes sense. And But I really love this, so I would try this again, um, or try, not again, but I would try this over the face and still use this where I used concealer. Um, and those are just like little things I would do here and there. I know that that was like a lot of info on just the foundation, but I, you guys know me. I'm like a foundation queen, and I really love to give you as much of the info as I can. So I do like the foundation. I will definitely try it again. Um, but as far as like this and what it was, I am I actually was pleasantly surprised. I'll give Give you the close up here in a second but for the most part I think the only areas that I had issues were over like the acne portion other than that it didn't oxidize the color was really nice um, I had a little bit of an issue with it in my fine lines like on the sides of my mouth a little bit on my forehead but like you guys my Hulk literally didn't crease hardly at all it's crazy so I'm, I'm impressed so next up you guys that brings us to the concealer now as far as this goes it actually wore really well it didn't come off my under eye still looks really good 
The only issue I have with this concealer is that it wasn't like full, full coverage. This is definitely a lighter medium or like medium-ish coverage. It's buildable to medium. Um, it didn't completely cover and take away all the shadow that I have in my bag area, but with that being said, it lightened up and brightened my face so beautifully that I just can't be mad at it. Um, then we're going to go in to, actually, you know what? I want to drift over to here real quick. This is the MAC, uh, what is this? The MAC Studio Fix uh, Sculpt and Shape Contour Palette, and I love this too. I didn't have an issue with this, not whatsoever. I love the brighter shades. I actually was really impressed that this bright shade over here was bright on my face. It wasn't just like just the same tone. It actually added like an element of brightness to it that I thought was really beautiful. I also really, really liked these blushes. Obviously, it's like a blush, so I haven't had a chance to play with it a ton, but I really like these. I love the concept, and I love the fact that when you're using them, you can decide, like for this one, this is the Instant Nude. I like that you get to decide exactly how much of what you want on your face. You can decide if you want more of a bronzy cheek, if you want more of a flush cheek, if you want to mix them. Like It just gives you a lot more room Room to kind of decide what you want down to this end over right over here which is almost more of like a highlight shade like a very very nice glow powder almost which would look beautiful on top of your cheekbone if you were going for like a like a less is more highlight I can't relate to that but if you're going for that I think it would be beautiful these are just very versatile um what else was in today's video oh these little tart sets I really enjoyed these too. Now, I believe when these launched, they were like right around 25 to 30-ish dollars a piece, somewhere in that, like 25 to 35 dollars. I don't remember, but I really like these. I've, I've worn a couple of them before, and today I wore one of these shades. Which one did I wear? Fine? Or, yeah, I think I wore the shade Fine, and it was beautiful all day long. It stayed really well. There's actually still, after all day of me eating and drinking and living my best life, there's still like the purple remnants all around my lips. It's such a good color. They are matte, However, these do accept gloss very well. So if you pick them up and you're like not obsessed with the matte feel on your lips, feel free to add a gloss. It doesn't screw up these. If anything, what I did is I wore this lipstick for the first part of the day, ate lunch, and I found that I had like, you know, some of it left, but not all of it because these are not transfer resistant. So I took a gloss, I put it on, and it lasted the rest of the day and everything went on fantastic. I think that's everything, you guys. Oh my God. So let me know what you think down below. And I want to know from you guys too, are you cool or are you happy with this style of video, is that even the right word? Where I did like basically no eye makeup, but we really focused on the face. I want to know if focusing on the face fa -fa 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 -fa, is something you guys want to do with me. Do you want me to take you with me on this journey? Because I have been thoroughly enjoying doing so much base and like face makeup and not really focusing too much on the eyes. I've been loving it. Obviously there are going to be palettes and eye releases and stuff like that. You guys have already seen those this week. Like that's going to be a thing no matter what. But I just want to know from you guys if you're cool with me when I do videos like this. Do you still like them? So definitely leave me all of your comments down below because your feedback is like the most important thing. And while you're down there, scroll on up to that description box. Girl, you know what I'm about to say. Check out my Instagram and my Twitter. It's a pop in place. We see all kinds of cute things, outfits, and just it's everything cute, really. All my little sneak peek previews are going on there. They're going on there right now, as a matter of fact. <laughs> what can I say? So let me know. God, I'm so sassy tonight. Let me know everything that you guys have, all your thoughts down below. Please do not forget to subscribe as well if you have not already. I'm here five days a week Monday through Friday we're always looking at like new releases and favorites and this and that like you guys we blow through so much product on this channel and it is so awesome and I love that you guys don't make me blow through all this product on my own so thank you again so much for watching and uh, please do not forget to have a great day night weekend whatever it is when you're watching this and I'll see you in the next one bye and then on the other side I want to take my glow essence from Becca I have used this this herm to derm to sat on a wall herm to derm to had a great fall and it looks like they released this in, oh my, released this. I need a makeup wipe. Hello, 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 I need a makeup wipe, a makeup wipe. Okay. Oh, girl. You be looking so good with your little mascara dot on the side of your face that I honestly think I'm just going to leave there. Like, who, who's going to care if I accidentally missed and got a little right here? Who's going to care? Literally no one because I challenge anyone to tell me they've never done it, okay? Wow, that highlight girl, like, hello, I'm sorry, like, even my brow bone, hello, hello, hi, like, are you here to be my best friend? Because I think so. I think I just said breast friend, and that's not what I meant. Whoa, Nelly, whoa, black buddy, bam, bam, whoa, black buddy, bam, bam, the damn thing going wild, bam, bam.